Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash wiseguyradio. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. That's at www.audibletrial.com, A-U-D-I-B-L-E-T-R-I-A-L.com forward slash wiseguyradio. This is the Wise Guy Radio Show. A podcast dedicated to educating and inspiring through conversations with today's top talents in the world of glass. We will be dissecting their journeys in hopes to deliver actionable content that you, the artist, can start implementing now, helping you grow not only as a creative spirit, but also a successful artistic entrepreneur. With a little organization, relationship building, and your artistic ability, you can obtain greatness. Climb aboard, whether an artist, retail owner, or enthusiast, we have a ton of fun in store for you. Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show, episode number 23. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope you guys are having a great week and it's uh, productive in the studios and what have you. And you're out there enjoying your new glass that you've purchased from all these amazing artists in our community. Uh, this week we are in the middle of building a new studio here in town with myself and four other, uh, actually I guess three other friends and including my assistant uh, that makes four. So there were five of us in there. And uh, we're actually all pretty impressed by how fast we've been able to get this bad boy built up and uh, more or less running. And today we are doing ventilation. So after I get done recording this and editing the show, I will be heading to the sweat box and getting our ventilation in so that I can get my ass to work. Uh, so that being said, I hope you all are enjoying this show so far this week. Uh, this week is all about the studio, but also today's show is going to be... Uh, review for our new audiobook series we're doing, our monthly Wise Guy Radio Audiobook of the Month Club. Uh, this book is The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. And uh, as of last week, I asked that you guys go over and listen to the first three chapters. And I myself personally listened to the entire book and actually have listened to it twice now. And uh, this book is amazingly informative, uh, not only as an artist, but also as an artist who wants to run a business and run a business successfully. Uh, so uh, that being said, also today's tips and tricks. Um, I have a studio tip and trick for the week and also a health tip, which is going to be our new segment, the Wise Guy Radio Health Tip of the Month. And this month is going to be all about your skin and how to protect it and stay safe. Uh, I went and saw a dermatologist yesterday, so I will be uh, giving you guys that insight here in a little bit. But first, I do want to go over this book, which is the main thing for today's show. Uh, Again, the book is called The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. And again, I had asked that you guys listen to chapters one through three, uh, which I have and have focused on that for this show. So in the first three chapters, uh, he gets into the whole concept of what it is to be a, uh, as a business owner, there's three different mentalities that we have. The first one being the technician, which is the artist itself, uh, you know, the one that manufactures and actually creates the product. Uh, Also the manager who runs the business, the technical side of things. And then the entrepreneur who is the daydreamer and the person who is looking at how we can perfect our business, how we can grow, how we can make a difference in the world as well. So as we all know, as a technician and as a glass artist, uh, our most valuable time is behind the torch. But we also have to remember that in order to run a functional, successful, organized business, we have to be able to do the other two areas of our life, which is the manager and the entrepreneur. So kind of here, I wrote some notes down that I'm going to be going over and uh, kind of goes into uh, my interview I had with Judah at Dragon Heads a couple weeks ago um, in terms of what, as a retail owner, uh, his perspective was on what he's looking for. Uh, from you guys that come in and sell your glass. So kind of what I wanted to go over really was these three facets of the areas um, as as a business owner with the technician, the manager, and the entrepreneur. And also this area of these chapters that he started off as, uh, he referred uh, Michael Gerber, uh, being he, the author, uh, really referred to these areas as the infant stage of a business. Uh, as we get first get into our businesses, we're super passionate and excited and happy and you know, the first week we work 60 hours, the second week we work 80 hours, the third week we work 120 hours, and before we know it, we're so burnt out, we don't want to do this anymore, and we hate blowing glass. Because not only are you having to run your studio, 
You also have to make sure you have inventory in terms of materials and stock. You have to deal with customers. You have to deal with packing orders. Uh, you also have to plan trips to go to shops or trade shows or whatever. And it can be quite overwhelming if you're not prepared. And uh, really, with with the way we're set up, uh, as long as you're not in a retail store type setting, as a smoke shop per se, um, just as a manufacturer, uh, you can really simplify all of this into a couple of areas um, to really make your business run smoothly. So you can really focus the percentage of your time as the technician behind the torch. So as a technician, we need to have an idea of what our week looks like in terms of orders or stock needed to sh- for shop runs or even upcoming trade shows. Systematically schedule out the week, which will help you relieve stress so the time behind the torch as a technician will be more efficient. As the manager, systems have to be put into place to make incoming orders easier to organize and schedule so the customer can be given an estimated time of completion. Whether an order for a retail store or a custom, this will give you a deadline which will push you to finalize the order in a timely fashion and not just waiting until the very last second to complete. This will also give you time to deal with any potential issues that may occur. Most orders I tell myself, uh, my customers personally, uh, is around a two to three week turnaround. Uh, Ultimately, if you keep stock of your product line, then when you get shop orders, you'll have inventory that you can then ship or run to the shops yourself. If your shop is local or is within a two-hour drive, make the first trip there in person, but make sure you ask your customer or shop owner if they prefer that you come in person, or if you have any future orders, can they be shipped instead. If you are traveling, it is imperative that you set a minimum order for yourself to make the time spent away from the studio count. If you think of an order, say 20 items that are valued at a wholesale of $500, and it took you 15 hours to complete, you need to add the time that you're on the road and in the shop to find the estimate of how much you are truly making in terms of profit. There is a lot of income that could be lost on the road if you don't plan accordingly. That's why having a minimum number for orders is ideal. If you're new and just starting, set the minimum order at $300. If you're established, set your minimum order at five to $700. And depending on the shop, you can go as high as a $1,000 minimum order. As the manager, you need to be able to schedule out these road trips by making calls in advance to set up appointments with your shops. A good time frame is call a week ahead for the initial setup. Find out needs of your shop and also let them know if you have any new items that you'd like to have them check out. Some shops will give exclusivity on new product lines as incentives to grab them. Make a list of their needs so you don't forget. Then follow up two days before as a courtesy call and reminder that in such and such date you are swinging by and give them a basic overview of what you're bringing them and again ask if they have any other needs. Then the day of the trip call again and let them know about what time they should be expecting you. All this will show them that you're not only an organized and professional but you're also empathetic to their needs. This will help build a solid relationship which will lead to a happy customer and consistent orders. Before you go to the shop Post on your social media feed to let your followers know where they can now find these new products that you have made. And it'll also drive traffic to said retail shop's social media feed as well. And your shop owners will love you for that. For entrepreneur in this case, while you're on the road, it'll give you time to daydream about new items, how you can improve certain areas of your business or glass line. Before you leave, make sure you're looking around the shop to see what they have in stock, but also look to see what they don't have in stock. There's many times where you can walk out of a shop with a brand new order that you weren't even expecting to begin with. It'll also show your shop owner that you care about their store and as a business, and that you want to make sure that their inventory they have stays full in stock. Now, depending on the shops too, not every shop can afford to always have stock and be filled all the time. So kind of pay attention to that kind of stuff, but it still is very beneficial to you just to ask the shop before you leave, hey, are there any other things you might need before I leave? And then make sure you write those items down so you don't forget about it. And then on your way home, on your road trip, make sure that you kind of think about your trip, your way, you know, the experience that you had with the shop, things that you may be able to improve upon, you know, as you're, as verbally as you communicate yourself as a salesperson. You know, a lot of little areas there that you can do, but this will definitely make your trip way more profitable, especially if you think of other areas where you can merchandise your brand, such as hats, t-shirts, and hat pins, etc. If you can hone your skills in all three of these areas, the technician, the manager, and the entrepreneur, as a business owner, and utilize each one of these individually, you will find your business will flow and grow smoothly, and that overwhelming feeling of hopelessness will go away. Get organized and efficient, and you will begin to see your profits increasing while your level of stress decreases. It'll make a huge difference so when you're behind the torch, you're not worrying about money coming in, when your next bill will get paid, blah, blah, blah. You'll just be able to focus on your glass 
And especially if you're not waiting till the very last minute to produce your items, you won't feel rushed and you'll be able to produce the highest quality product that you can produce. In this book, The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber, the next area of this book is going to be the adolescent stage of business, which is chapters four and five. And next Wednesday, we will then discuss chapters four and five. I hope you guys are enjoying this and uh, that this is helping you as an entrepreneur and artist. Because again, if you want to be a successful artist and run a business as an artistic entrepreneur, you really need to hone in to all three facets of these areas of your business, the technician, the manager, and the entrepreneur. And again, don't forget, guys, you can get a free copy of this audiobook if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash wiseguyradio and just sign up for their free 30-day trial where you can download this book and many others for free. That is audibletrial.com forward slash wiseguyradio and you guys can get this book for free. Hope you enjoyed this week's discussion on our Book of the Month Club. So now it's time for our monthly medical report. And this month is all about dermatology. Yesterday I went and visited my dermatologist and we discussed concerns I had about the long-term exposure from the flame. Skin cancer, dry skin, and adult acne, which can just be a few issues we deal with that are due to excessive heat and drying out of our skin. Her biggest recommendation she kept saying to me over and over is to moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. She recommended finding a face moisturizer that contained an SPF of 30 and above. She said that if you go to the store and look for these products, that things like a product like Oil of Olay, you know, women's uh, products for skincare, are going to be the way to go and they're going to be more affordable because they take these same products and they package them in a male masculine container and sell them to men for a higher price. So you can get the cheaper generic version, even, you know, Walgreens version or whatever of these skin products. Uh, she recommended that you get a facial lotion moisturizer that contains an SPF of 30 and above uh, to apply it thin and light and not heavy. That way your skin can absorb it and you don't really leave a whole lot of residue behind. Um, and then also reapply as needed. She also recommended a specific product that is called, uh, it's called Blue Lizard Sunblock. Uh, it's actually an Australian company that made this stuff, and its uh, basic and main ingredient is zinc oxide, uh, which for the longest time, lifeguards just used zinc as, uh, as a sun block. It's not a sun uh, screen, it's a sun block, which is better for you. Uh, it could actually block the harmful heat and rays. The heat is just one of those areas that we really can't avoid unless you're using a face shield. Um, when we're dealing with our arms and stuff, you can use Kev's large sleeves. And those Kevlar sleeves will definitely help. Now, when it comes down to it, you know, it's your benef- best benefit is to just use a uh, protectant like a sunblock. You recommend this particular brand, Blue Lizard, because uh, of their they're recognized as a higher brand product. Um, they're not quite as pricey. They're readily available at all places like Walgreens, Amazon.com. You can also go to their website directly, which is bluelizard.net. That's blue, L-I-Z-Z-A-R-D.net. Or you can go to Amazon, whichever. But these simple remedies will help keep your skin healthy and protect it from dryness and potential skin cancer issues. I hope all this all helps you guys. And this has been your Health Insight of the Month. And now it's time for the Wise Guy Radio Shop Tip of the Week. Broken Graphite Reamer Tips. So as you guys all know, the more you use graphite, the weaker it gets, especially when you're dealing with heat. And there's nothing worse than dropping and having a reamer roll off your bench and the tip cracking on it. So this week's tip is how to fix that and how to find a solution. And if you don't already know, the best solution you can go find is a pencil sharpener. Now I've got one that has several different holes in it uh, for different sizes, and it is beneficial because then you can s- squeeze your uh, graphite you know, reamer in this hole and then you can then get a nice fine point. Um, also, if you could find one of the old school mechanical pencil sharpeners that you can mount to a wall that has the different size holes in it, um, that will also help out, especially because of all the different size rumors that we have. Um, if you want to keep the tip hexagonal shape, um, you can then go back after you make a fine point and just uh, follow the lines that are already there and just use like concrete or something like that to continue to square off the tip. Um, and then use some fine sandpaper to then kind of buff it out and polish it per se. It'll definitely help out with uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff and getting that shape back. So 
uh, yeah, I hope that helps out. And, uh, that has been your Wise Guy Radio Shop Tip of the Week. Everybody's enjoying the show so far. I'm trying out some new shit here, trying to figure out some new ways of making the segments go together and come together and whatever. Uh, I just want to remind you guys, don't forget to register at wiseguyradio.com for our newsletter and updates on the shows and upcoming guests. Uh, we are about to upload a whole bunch of new stuff on there. I'm sending over emails to Dropbox tonight, so my dude, Xavier, who does my graphics and stuff, can then get his uh, his side together and upload all this stuff for him and for us and for you guys. And then we will have lots of fun stuff to download. Um, other than that, hope you guys have a safe and healthy week. Um, I will be sending out some pictures and putting pictures up of our new studio. Um, I was going to kind of go over the process of the communicating between all of us as we were brainstorming. But honestly, we didn't brainstorm. We kind of drew some pictures real quick and we all immediately agreed on what we wanted to do. Um, and it went up. It was kind of uh, interesting ordeal something that I honestly wasn't expecting um, I was kind of expecting some headbutting and you know what have you but um, the guys that I have in the studio I chose because they're good friends of mine and we all are on the same page and same vibe way blank kind of deal um, so this process was a lot easier than I really expected and we all were really blown away that we were able to turn our torches on yesterday after just two days in this in this place i mean literally i paid the money on sunday uh you know sunday night we moved some stuff in monday everything was moved in built benches yesterday finished the benches and today we are putting in ventilation so i'll be putting up some more pictures of that um and then what i'm going to do is talk to a contractor friend of mine and bring him in and we're going to draw out some actual blueprints of the studio space, um, how we're going to expand it with offices and designate certain spaces for what have you. Um, and then also with this blueprint, I'm going to take a little bit of the blueprint area where our benches are with the ventilation and put that up on the website for you guys so you can get a kind of a general overview of what it was that we did uh, in terms of the construction side of things. Um, and none of us have any kind of really construction background. We've all cut wood and drilled holes and what have you. Um, but by having a design and a blueprint, um, it'll help you guys out there that want to build your studios and increase your volume size and have good ventilation and all that kind of stuff. Um, this will give you some kind of insights on all that jazz. So either way, folks, happy melting. Thank you guys again for all the love and support. If you can go to iTunes and give me a five-star review and a little little write down there uh, for a little thing that would be cool as a review. And uh, share the show with your friends and let them all know what's going on in this community as we grow and we continue to grow our businesses and our profits and put smiles on our faces. Uh, Don't forget to stretch, drink lots of fluids, and also don't forget to take a break. Go play, have fun. Go play some frisbee golf. Go for a walk on the beach. Go walk in the woods. Go ride a canoe down a river. Go fishing. Read a book. Hang out in your backyard. Plant some plants. You know, get out from behind the torch and get some fresh air. Your soul needs it. Talk to you guys soon. Love y'all. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show. If you have any questions, comments, or remarks, please leave them in the show notes page area where it says comments. We'll see you soon. Have a wise night. You're listening to the Wise Guy Radio Show.